Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm using the iPhone 11 again, and we're gonna up the game, and instead of using the in-camera app, which is what I have been doing in the past, we put Lightroom on. Lightroom is a free app, and if you're just a beginner, or you wanna up your game with photos, let's have a look at the app. I've got 10 tips for you, which will help improve your photos. Got a little set here, let's get into it. First thing we need to do is clean the lens. This has been in our pocket. We've had sticky fingers all over the lens. I always carry these little micro uh, cleaning cloths around and I just give it a clean. Don't use your shirt because it potentially could scratch your lenses. Even going in out of your pocket could potentially scratch them. Just give them a nice good clean so you're starting with a nice clean lens because our goal is to get the best picture we possibly can. All right, let's get the app open. All right. We've got the app open now. Now you're going to have to bear with me because I'm going to be looking down and then looking at you, kind of bouncing back and forth. So you're just going to kind of have to put up with that. But as you can see here, we've got the uh, little app running so you can see exactly what's going on and what I'm talking about. Now the first thing we need to do within the app is we need to get out of this auto mode and get into professional mode because after all, we are professionals. So the next one down, professional. The other one was the uh, HDR, high dramatic range, but we're gonna play in the professional mode. Now, we've got set into professional. Now we need to change our file format to make sure that we're getting the best quality image that we can. So if you click at the top center there, you see file format come up and you've got your DNG, which is Adobe's version of a raw file or JPEG. And I'm already set in the DNG. Now from there, what do we have to do? Because we're trying to create that better image, we need to control the camera a little better and make sure things are good. You can see I have the grid lines on here right now, but if I click along this top button, I can bring this little row of icons up. Now the one with the grid pattern is my grids. So I can select which version I want. I prefer this one because it is the rule of thirds but you do also have the other artistic version. So I'll go back to the rule of thirds, and the one on the far right, as you can see, brings that little uh, icon in the middle, but look what happens when I tip and turn. It's a level, and that is really handy to have within the camera. So I've got my rule of thirds set, and I've got my level set. What's the next thing I need to set? White balance. Let's make sure we have the proper white balance. So along the bottom here, you can see I've got all my tools available to me now. So I click on white balance, and I have a selection of different white balances available to me. The eyedropper at the end is a little different though. It's allowing me to select an area of uh, say 18% gray or pure white to set the white balance. So you simply, well, let me bring it back up, click on the eyedropper and it's telling me to fill the area with the surface. I hit the check mark, there you go. So now I've manually set my auto exposure I'm not allowing the camera to make adjustments, or if there happens to be a little change in light, it's not going to change because I've already set it. So we've got that set. Now, most cell phones, smartphones, whatever you want to call them, mobile phones, when you're taking a picture, it tries to do what it thinks is best at the cost of your film speed, your ISO. It'll tend to push it very high, which causes a lot of noise and artifacts within the image. So we need to try and keep that low. So if I come under here where it says ISO, auto, we need to take it off of that and I can adjust it wherever I want. So let's dump this down, say, ah, there looks good. Now, you can see I've got these little marching ants. Those show that I'm overexposed in those areas. If you don't like the marching ants or zebras, whatever you want to call them, up at the top here in that row of icons, you've got that pyramid, click on the pyramid, boom, gone. It hides them. So if you don't like that, you can turn it off. I personally like to see the highlights that I'm potentially clipping. So I come back in here, and now I come into the shutter speed, which I can adjust, and I can adjust this down. Right, to black, and everything in between. So I want something, now I'm not really playing much with the lighting because the lighting I'm lighting this with is the lighting I'm lighting me with. So it's not really set up to do a little still life, 
but that doesn't look bad. So now I've taken my ISO down, so I've reduced chances of noise and grain and everything else, and I adjusted my shutter speed to compensate for it. I can't adjust the f-stop, it's fixed. It's unfortunate, but it's fixed. But I can play with the lenses, because I've got the iPhone 11, I've got two lenses. And you can see just to the right of the uh, button, that you, uh, your shutter button, it has a lens symbol with a W, wide angle. Click it. Now I'm ultra wide. That is very handy that I can access my lens through the app. But let's get back to the wide. That looks pretty good. Now how about focus? We are professional. We need to be able to control our focus. Well, if I simply click and hold on the screen, hey, I can see the focus area. But look at the green. And I, it's a feature I really like. Everything that's green is in focus. So you can see various areas that aren't as sharp. The green is the sharpest area, the non-green not. Now if I want to adjust my focus, then I simply come here beside white balance and there's a little box with an X in the middle. I click on it, it brings up that little pop-up bar. If I grab and hold that and slide, look at how the picture goes out of focus and comes into focus. And you can see how the green's changing and where the green is changing because you can play with the focus point. If you want the focus back a little more, you can adjust it manually. That is very handy. Now, that looks pretty good to me. Now, another tip I will give you is do not do this. Don't take your fingers and zoom in on your picture. Because when you do that, it's a digital zoom and you're causing artifact and breaking down of the image because you're taking the same amount of pixels but you're stretching and playing with them. Not a good idea. So if you want to get in closer, physically get in closer. If you want to be further, get back further. Don't use the zoom if you want the best quality for your photo. So I was in and around here. Let's get our focus locked back again. Now we've got everything basically set for that. And we can take our picture. I've now taken the best quality picture that I possibly can. Now, where we adjusted from automatic to pro, you do have the high dramatic range available to you. I'm not a big fan of the HDR look, uh, if I need to lighten shadows and, and things like that, I'll tend to do it in post versus doing in here. And you can see on the table now how I'm getting green on this bit of tray in front, meaning it's in focus when it wasn't before because the high dramatic range is trying to balance the shadow and then the highlights. To me, most times it creates a bit flatter of an image, but that is up to you to decide as a professional photographer that you are. So those are my tips to help you get the best out of your cell phone by using the Lightroom app. And the Lightroom app is free. There is in-app purchases if you want, but everything I just showed you, you can do for free. You just simply download, log in, and away you go. So a bit better than the built-in app that comes with the iPhone. I've shown you before how I use that app and it works wonderful. But having that little extra control here, especially playing with the focus points and everything, brilliant. So I'm going to experiment a little more with this and maybe we do a little more food photography with the iPhone using the Lightroom app. And maybe we'll even get into some mobile editing, which is a new world for me because I always do it on my PC. That's right. Use an Apple, but I edit on a PC. All right. That's it for this one. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. So, until the next time.